Good morning, third grade. Today is Wednesday, May 13th, 2020, and it is another great day for a book a day with Miss A. Today we are going to read the hybrid the hybrid text titled Python. It is written by Christopher Cheng and illustrated by Mark Jackson. And I want you to think, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. What do you already know about pythons? Is there anything that you have questions about? Anything that you're curious about? And I want you to think about those questions as I read this text to you. And I want you to think about the new information that you are learning. And I also want you to think about how this definitely ties into hybrid text. Hybrid texts combine both fiction books and nonfiction books together. So it gives us a mixture and the best of both worlds on both fiction and nonfiction. So I want you to think about those questions as I read this to you. Let's get started. That's the, that's the first page. So here we have that. And I'll slowly show you the python. Interesting that the python's not going anywhere near that field mouse. It's morning in the bush. Python stirs and peeks out from her sheltered resting place. She warms her head and smells the air with her forked tongue. Now it's time to warm her whole body. She slithers into the open to bask. A sunny rock is a perfect place. Pythons, like all reptiles, are, are ectothermic. That means that they acquire heat from their environment. I think um, that, that book that we read, I think it, it's, it was Verde. Verde, which was a green python, she would like to um, she would like to sit on rocks as well, and that helps their bodies warm up. Her scales are dull. Her eyes, her eye scales are cloudy. Her body has no more room to grow inside her old scaly covering. It's time to molt. She rubs her head against a rock and the old sack of scales peels back just like a sock. Underneath is a shiny snake. Now her smooth scales glisten in the sun. Python's sleek scales are made of keratin, just like human fingernails. Snakes don't have eyelids, so they, so they can't blink. Their eyes are covered by a single snake. Scale. Maybe that was a new piece of information for you. And you can really see how the old scale uh, looks very different from her new, her new body. With her body now warm, she glides to the dappled light in the trees. Slowly rippling, she moves along the branches. Notice how long her body is. Head, tail. Just wraps around the whole tree. A bird drops onto a branch. He pecks at the bark, unaware that he's being closely watched. Very, very closely. Python smells the air, lies in ambush, and waits. Pythons flick their tongues in and out to pick up scents. The snake is not being rude. She's smelling. Oh boy. The bird takes another step closer, focused only on crawling insects. Python waits no longer. She misses. Just in time, the bird flaps away, safe from razor sharp teeth. Pythons have rows of needle-like teeth, perfect for grabbing hooking and holding prey, but no good for chewing food. 
There's a close-up of those needle-like teeth. She grows darker. Sorry, the sky grows darker. Python slivers to the bushes and finds a covered spot. Passing creatures will not see her here. She checks the air. The animals of the night are on the move. A possum scurries past her nest in the tree. A bat flaps by, close to the ground, chasing low flying moths. A rat scampers among the grasses. Once more, Python smells the air, lies in ambush, and waits. Many pythons have pits just under their lips. These are sensors that help them detect warm-blooded animals. Pits are great for hunting in the dark or in shady forests. There she is. Can't even see her head. A rat stops. He scratches the ground and moves a little closer, looking for seeds to eat. Python waits no longer. Dinner. Pythons are constrictors. A python doesn't crush its prey. Instead, it suffocates it. Broken bones would make it harder to eat. Look at her just waiting. With a vice-like grip, she holds her prey tightly and then quickly, carefully, she coils her body around her evening feast. When the rat can no longer breathe, dinner is ready. Python loosens her coils and starts to eat, the head first, then the body, until the tail, until finally the tail disappears. Like all snakes, pythons can unhinge their jaws and expand their bodies to eat food that is much bigger than they are. Heavy python moves very slowly to a shelter to rest and digest her big meal. It will take days. Meanwhile, she waits. There you can see a full belly. And that's why she is moving slowly and she's heavier. For some pythons, one large meal will be enough to last for weeks and weeks without eating again. That's an interesting fact for you. I don't think we could go days or days without eating. And this is where I will start on Thursday. I hope that you are keeping those questions in the back of your mind and you're thinking about um, some pieces of information that you already knew. I hope that you're making connections and maybe um, uh, realizing, hey, I already knew that. Or I hope that you are learning more information about pythons as I read this to you. Keep thinking about that because as I read this book to you on Thursday and finish it, I want you to um, think about all of these things. Until then, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, keep working hard. Keep yourselves accountable. And do the very best that you can. Bye, third grade.